called Does Recovery Have Its Own Language? And I would say it's, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure that, let's say, I'm a orthodox monologist, Yara Zimmerman says that, it's a special diagnosis, and workshops are not to be monologues, so it's up to you uh, also to make it more interactive. So whenever you feel I'm talking too much and you want to say something, just let me have questions, don't disagree or whatever, have comments. Yeah? Uh, because what I, uh, the, the main presentation in here is just a brief summary of my one day long workshop I usually have in check for service users providers. So that's, this is also the reason why I'm doing it in English in here, because in Czech you can, you can order me, <laughs> and I can, I can, I can come. <laughs> uh, uh, well, now it's, uh, it's true, but it was a joke. Well, so maybe yes, no question. Who thinks? Recovery does have its own language. Hands up. <coughs> ah, okay. Who <coughs> thinks the other way around? Recovery does not. Yeah. Marcy, brave, brave. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe as well. I don't know. <laughs> not, not, don't know it. We'll be maybe in an hour. We'll, we'll know more about that. Uh, well, just few first comments on it. Uh, Actually, I would love to start with, with Vlaďka's sentence. Vlaďka is our peer worker. Uh, what's room for the speaker, uh, sweeper? It's a language for helping professionals. Uh, we are not the helping professionals that help with, with the hands. We have no other qualification than to talk. And uh, uh, we are not the only profession that only talks, of course. But it's one of the main uh, main uh, tools we use. Uh, we are not good in, I don't know, operating people or, you know, some, some do exercises with people. We are not good in that. And then it's, I think it's inspired by Radkin Honzak, Czech quite famous psychiatrist, who says that uh, if you do your profession right, uh, there are two sort of things that should be kept in balance, which is the uh, techné uh, in, in Greek, sort of craft, you, you have to manage. There are some tools you have to have uh, to be able to, 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 to do things, like screwdrivers for the uh, electricity man or something like that. And uh, when we moved from the town to the village, there was a saying that, uh, that the only tool the villagers use for repair things is a hammer. <laughs> and if you are helping professional and the only tool you have in your language toolbox is a hammer, you can't really sometimes help. You know, it's better to have more different tools in your toolbox. And you have to buy them. You have to practice, you have to uh, read books, or you have to do whatever to have different tools. And of course, some of us use prefer to use that sort of tools and other, others prefer to use other set of tools. But the more tools you have, the bigger probability it will fit. You will fix it. Uh, you, you manage the, the, the work you, you are supposed to do. So that's the techne uh, part of it. And the other, other part is, is sort of art. It's, uh, it's something that you, that you can't buy and you can't... yes. It, it just comes it, with your talents, maybe it's inborn, or you may achieve it through the experience, or through following the role models, the, the other people that are brilliant in, in that sort of helping art and stuff like that. And it's, uh, and it, it's not a matter of money, money, it's not a matter, matter of how many courses You've, you've done, it's not a matter of how many books you've read. So, but, or, well, there might be the correlation, of course. That doesn't need to, necessarily. 
So those two parts are somehow important. And when we were starting our projects with Belgian friends on recovery, we said, well, when you visit the two doctors with the same diploma from the same university, with the same knowledge base, and you prefer one and not the second one, why is it so? Because the one is like, well, what do you want? And, you know, and the other one is, do, what can I do for you? Yeah? And maybe it's inborn, and it's not possible to be educated. And maybe it is. And if it's that way, we want to be able to provide that training. Because it's important. It's important. So, so might be inborn talents, but might be also something that could be taught. And now we are doing the other workshop downstairs. If recovery could be taught or not. So we are here, so we hope the record would be all right. And we can later uh, see the, the record of, of that workshop downstairs. Well, step to, to, the, to, the, to the side. Uh, recovery is very often connected with hope. Uh, for me, at least for me, but also the meta-studies, when you uh, list all the definitions of recovery, you very rarely find the definition without the word hope in it. Yeah? So, uh, it is an important thing also for me, uh, and it actually started uh, my interest in recovery. The hope is something which is really very precious in, in the recovery topic for me, because it's something strange. And it's quite difficult to find the books where to, you can read something about hope. It's not the social war textbook, it's not the medicine textbook. Sometimes philosophy, sometimes religions, sometimes, sometimes psychotherapy, I don't know. But it's quite difficult. And uh, yeah, well, but by talking about hope, you don't always make hope be present. <laughs> uh, you, may, you may experience that in a, in a church. There are priests and sometimes you just, they are brilliant. And you say, yes! And sometimes he speaks big words. He said, it's rubbish. It doesn't work. Somehow. Yeah. So, and actually my colleague is studying philosophy. Philosophy, he's graduated in philosophy now, and he's permanent, not permanent, but very serious, toothaches for years. So he's like crazy from pain in his mouth. And he, actually that, that sentence is from our Facebook communication, because he said, well, I would love to talk about, uh, with you about hope, because we discussed it, uh, connected with his uh, voluntary activity in Greece in the migration, migrant camps. Yeah, and and I, I, I wrote to him that, <laughs> but don't you expect, <laughs> I guess you don't expect, that by talking about hope, the hope just appear. Not everyone, every, 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 uh, every location or every, every time. Well, uh, how to care for recovery by language means. So this, now, now we yeah, somehow put it together. There was language, there was recovery, now we're trying to put it together. Uh, well, are we questioning a new question or is it something like old stuff? So, thanks to Plato, sends the letter, uh, I, usually, I usually quote that part. It, in Czech, it's, I know it in Czech, so I've just googled it in English. And th it's, uh, in Sennett's letter, in that part, uh, he replies to the question, why Plato, 2,300 years before us, uh, uh, why he had not written a book about philosophy, which is care for the soul. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. so uh, could you write a textbook about how to care about our souls? He says, no, it does not exist. If will there ever exist any treatise, any book of mine dealing those, I, I will not read it. Not, I haven't. I, I, I haven't. Sorry, I haven't uh, written it. But I will not write it. Never ever, because it's not possible. 
Yeah? Because, uh, because you can sort of wear it in words. Uh, but, and in Czech, and now I, for half a sentence, in Czech it, it, it goes, uh, it goes z hojného soubití a soužití o dané té věci na jednou uh, samo se to znítí a samo pak je žoří. V duši se to samo znítí a samo pak je žoří. Nějak takhle to je. So, this is, this is in English. Uh, but as a result of continued application to the subject itself, which in Czech is brilliantly translated as like being together and living together. You know, uh, it appears it is brought to birth in the soul on a sudden, as light that is kindled by a leaping spark. Just it just appears. It just appears, which is perfectly together with what Mike Slade says in his Hundred Ways to Support Recovery, that we are not providers of recovery. <laughs> recovery is not anything you can give to anyone. Yeah, it just appears, and you just create the atmosphere or being together with that thing. And that's what we are trying to do at this conference, but this is also what we are trying to do when we sit together with our clients, somehow. But how does it work? <laughs> yeah? Are there meters how to do that? Well, uh, so that's Plateau, and that's my beloved Wittgenstein. Yeah? yeah, because at the end, there, there, that not everything you can, you can't say really everything. There is a big, huge part of of our life that must stay unspoken somehow. Mm -hmm. And Wittgenstein is brilliant in talking about it. That that we we are in permanent struggle at the at the border between what could be said and what could not. Mm -hmm. cannot. And so we have to do it. And we are not very successful. Because if you were, it wouldn't be that struggle. So you must not succeed in it, and you still have to do it. <laughs> which is brilliant, which is great. We have, a, we have a talk in our recovery college, so-called, next Monday, done by a priest, uh, which, is, which is called Theology of Not Being Successful. <laughs> and he's brilliant, he's brilliant. He's sort of priest loser. <laughs> yeah? He's not very successful doing his parish, but he's a brilliant guy. And he made this very nice soap, so that's just sort of advertise. advertisement if you stay till Monday, but it'll be in <laughs> uh, Well, uh, and now, uh, so that's the, that's the intro, that's the comments about how I understand the, the situation as a whole. And now, if we try to make some categories or smaller areas where we can, where we can uh, experience something or where we can search what we can do. So this is quite easy and it was mentioned many times from tomorrow morning where we started with UCOM session and then the conference started. So, the first easy topic, which is already at the table. So, a lot of recovery-oriented organizations do work on this. On recovery-oriented vocabulary. Because there are words that are nasty words, and there are words that are quite alright. If, if you are not too... too, um, too like... Yeah, I, I, my experience from the Ministry of Healthcare, the big meeting about transformation of uh, transformation of uh, uh, Czech mental health system, and there was a speaker uh, invited to talk about recovery. Uh, the speaker with self ex his own experience with mental illness, and he was uh, afraid of big audience and everything. He was not a speaker really, and he sort of uh, it was a speech with this sub title idea, the more often I mention recovery and hope, the more recovery oriented and hope oriented it will be. It was not successful really, you know. And it's, it's uh, so that's why, yes, might be, there might be recovery oriented vocabulary, but you must not make, you, you have to keep it in balance, not too less, not too much. 
And from our point, well, and one more experience from our, uh, from the year 2004, for example. We were, uh, my origins are, well, my origins are not important now, but in that period we lived in a house and we opened that house every working day from morning till the afternoon for people with any difficulties, from mental handicap, autism to psychiatric problems. And in the team we had quite, the, quite many Christians, Catholic Christians, myself, my wife. We had a co-worker who was uh, working towards becoming, being a nun. And, and we were in a situation like, come for the day, and later when we raise money, we convert that house into a residential house, we will live together there, our family and four or five people that need to stay with them. But there were like 15, 20 people. And some of them, the most clever ones, the more clever ones, said, well, but I'm also a Christian. <laughs> and I'm also sort of part of some parish. And I said, yes, all right. So at the team meeting one day, I said, uh, I don't want ever, never in this house hear any word about God, love, <laughs> anything. <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> if you are interested in it, do it. <laughs> don't say it. And we, we survived for a few years. And now we have it about the same way with recovery. <laughs> Can we do recovery-oriented service without saying the word recovery? <coughs> we would love to. We would love to. So, the, so that's about the vocabulary. Uh, of course, that's the people-first language rule, which is quite, even in our country now, quite spread. Not like everywhere, everywhere shooting, but the more up-to-date uh, organization just follow. Organizations follow, people first language, uh, roles or person, uh, the attitude, if the words, uh, words itself uh, include the symmetric or asymmetric relationship. Yeah, if, you, if you admit someone, yeah, if you release someone, if you move someone from one word to another word, it's a symmetric word. You know, have, have you discussed it or not? You have to ask afterwards. But there are also words that say it's symmetric. Yeah, we made a deal, we agreed, something like that. Yeah? So that, that, that's what I mean by uh, symmetric, asymmetric. Of course, the names of the roles. I'm an, I'm an expert and you are my client. I'm a doctor, you are a patient. And it's not bad, but sometimes it's good to know who is the service provider and who is the service user. Otherwise, we may, uh, we may uh, spend a lot of money doing it, nothing. You know? But you have to be aware of it. And then how do we call the actions? Do we use jargon? Do we use the uh, uh, exalted professional terms and stuff? Uh, do we call, do we do, are the names of our actions uh, the actions that are done with people, not with things? Because we have a jargon that says that we have, uh, what? What material you are, you are delivering us at the admit, uh, to the mental hospital? What a material? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that, that sort of vocabulary, it's quite clear. Uh, yeah, and so that's the... Bad, bad practice examples, and now what about the good practice examples? How does our vocabulary show we deal with unique situation, unique life story, unique human being? Now, do, do, do we have the sort of equivalence in our vocabulary that the words that, that we use on purpose to create that, I don't know what, atmosphere? <laughs> How do we address hope, not using the word hope? That's what I mentioned. <laughs> How can we support recovery, not using the word recovery? Uh, at the, five years ago, when we started the recovery website, the whole Zotava Inside, which is recovery in Czech, uh, we did a few interviews with interesting people with uh, three questions. And the question was, uh, what is it hope? Where does it come from? Or and the third question was, can you, and how it works, if you want to give it to someone. 
And those were three simple questions we asked to different people. Professor Kahogenova was one of them. Uh, some priests, of course. Church people were there. Punk band drummer <laughs> was in there. Uh, Mark Rajins, of course, was one of the people that in, uh, was interviewed about hope. And all the interviews are very brilliant, and I especially appreciate Mark Rajins' uh, interview because his hope is not that sort of uh, of religious hope. That's professional hope. It stays on his experience with people during his working career. And, and it's full of hope, and it and doesn't say, you have to believe in God or something like that. No, not at all. It's just um, my experience with people that things will turn better soon, and you have to trust them. Or something like that, easy things. And yeah, so I, I really, I don't know, I can't say anything more clear with that. Maybe you can. Maybe you can, yes. It's much more <laughs> Uh, do you have any comments to that? Because we move towards grammar afterwards. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure with the word recovery because my colleague here, she mentioned that uh, it's a, a different word in Czech, mm -hmm. different word in English, and different when you use computer. Mm -hmm. Then you use a recovery key, yes. and yes. it returns the yes. computer to the state yes. when somehow it works. Yes. But then <laughs> it will need some repair. Yes. So uh, new system. So yeah. it's really a tricky word for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yes. On, on the other hand, if you work with other people through language, mm -hmm. you try to create some similar understandings or plausibility. Way. You know. But, but, so we can't really give up using any words. Because I'm speaking by words now. Shall I sing or dance? No, it wouldn't be about language and recovery. We have to use some words. Yeah, and of course, understanding what recovery means to me, to you, are different. That's for sure, for each of us. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, that's... I don't know that American, he's not really very... For some controversial person, but the, 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 the quote is very nice for me. Or sorry, if you want to care for something, you call it flower. If you want to kill something, you call it a weed. <laughs> and it, it is like it is. It's like it is. And I, I googled it somewhere, it's by chance, and I love that quote because it, it's quite easy to understand. And it's really our choice. Because there is Sunflowers are wheat, and in, in our region, I don't know if it's important, but we have that, that terrible plant which is big like that, and it's very uh, aggressive to the skin. So small kids could be really terribly burned by it. And it was brought by one noble guy in 19th century to his, uh, to his garden of his uh, big castle. And it was a precious, precious flower. But now it's really a weed, and in, during the communist times, even the army with the tanks were, were, they were driving it through the fields, they just destroyed that, that brilliant flower. In 100 years, it turned totally the other way around. So it's really, yeah. But what I wanted to, yeah, no, that's too. So, and what's uh, my. I don't know if it's not mine, but what I think it's interesting to make one step further from the vocabulary to grammar, and I'm not really educated in language, so maybe there. Are. But still, I, my basic school knowledge of language is some, some words, and now we have the rules how to put words together. And the grammar is the more like basic rules, and then we make one step further to more like semantics or something like that. Uh, but the grammar. Uh, do we really need to care about grammar? My English grammar is terrible, but we still can sort of talk together. We can maybe understand what I try to say. Uh, so is it important or is not? It's not. Well, 
Mm, I really remember that from Melinda Pania, which is again almost 2000 uh, years old Buddhist scripture where uh, King Melinda is uh, uh, discussing with uh, wise man Nagasena and from there uh, the Melinda asks, so is there a man, a person, skin, bones, blood, flesh? And Nagasena says, well, all that, but put together in a special way. And this, how we put the things together is grammar for me. How, they, how we put words together uh, is, is, is the grammar. So that's why I think uh, grammar is important. And uh, now what I mean by that is really, I don't, I'm not, now uh, I'm, I can't say it properly in English, so I try to describe it. It's different if we say we or you will manage, or you will manage. Of course, it makes sense, it makes difference. Uh, it's uh, like what, 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 what will you do or what will you do? Uh, things like that. So that's a simple grammatical things that say, uh, is it, uh, what, what shall we do with our problem? What shall we do with your problem? What shall you do with your problem? What shall I do with your problem? <laughs> what shall you do with my problem? <laughs> to be complete. Yeah? So it, it matters, it matters. Um, uh, and then, of course, the special, special part of it is asking questions, because in therapy, in Ever, when we, when we want to help, we most often ask questions. And uh, maybe two. And, well, later in semantic, so I don't want to say like so I will leave that for later. But uh, are the questions open or closed? That's primary school question. Yeah, how old are you? Have you taken your pills? <laughs> taken your pills, yeah? So, and then there are the questions, how do you feel? What is it doing with you? Yeah, how do you understand that? Yeah? What's, what, what's the, what, what is this that you mentioned was important for you? And things like that. So, uh, so this is what I mean by, by grammar. Uh, well, yes, any comments to grammar part? We have two more small parts to go. <laughs> I told you, I'm very monologic and it's very difficult for me to start any discussion. I don't know that, so at least admit it. And Make, uh, make uh, at the beginning of each speech, I leave the blame at the audience. <laughs> it's easier for me. I just had a fresh, fresh experience from my uh, hospitalization. It was in January, and it was a Ukrainian doctor, and she asked me this open question: "How do you feel?" Yeah. But I had a, I wanted to smash her because yeah, yeah. because she was who put me into this situation, you know. So yes. so I. I said something like, what do you, yeah. what do you see? Yeah, 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 yeah. but the, I have a very similar story. We, uh, we are, you may notice the, our project Circus Paciento. We go around the mental hospitals making circus together with uh, people who are there. And once we uh, traveled to Slovakia to see the mental hospital where Martin Holly, today's director of Bohnice, was born. His father was actually director of that mental hospital. We wanted to see it, to see the, where Martin is from, and it was it was close to a uh, Hungarian border, and uh, there was a community with patients, and after the community uh, community circle with patients, and after that we we uh, went to the doctor and we started to talk to him, like and what do you want us to do and shall we what can we do and can we help and things like that and said sorry I'm I'm a Hungarian and I. In Slovakia, Slovakia, I can only say what is said at the community. <laughs> so yeah, how do you feel? But I can't understand you. <laughs> I know how to ask that, and I can't understand you. So it's in those times it was funny, but when it's <laughs> but I can imagine I would be like that if I worked in England. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, yeah, that's what is tricky for the doctor that goes there. Not easy. Um, so, 
the third part, short one, is the literary style. I don't know, yeah, the words, grammar, and then the, the, the styles. And style. And of course, we are taught from recovery brochures that it's most likely about stories. Uh, the, 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 just the life story. Uh, because it's a, there is a light dynamic, everything. It's not the protocol, anamnesis. Mm. It's story. Uh, and the tool we, we, we use very often is the dialogue and the, and the real dialogue and not the anamnestic dialogue. Uh, have you taken your pills? Have you slept? What's your voices? And things like that. Yeah, so, so that's quite, quite easy. Uh, and, but on the other hand, the doctors, uh, to be paid by insurance offices, they have to write huge piles of reports and they have a very special structure, otherwise they are not paid. And the same with our social workers. We have to report everything according to the legislation. And in legislation there are activities that don't every time make sense to us. Activating people, guiding people to offices. You want to talk to them, you want to be with them, you to spend time with them. You want, you want to help them with their troubles, but they are not mentioned in the law. <laughs> so you have to report something else. Yeah, maybe you can. That's my part of work where I work with people, and then I have part of work where I work with computer, and that's different reality. But the trouble from Europe, it's not because of our post-totalian uh, history, but it comes from all the Europe. The more and more time is the office time, of course. We don't have time to help people. We, could, we would love to do that, but we, very often we have to do it in extra, extra time. Uh, so, uh, so, can we do something about that literary styles? Can we change it? Uh, we have a, we have, well, I don't use it very often, but sometimes I, I do. It's, uh, I would call it like shit test. If I have to write a long report, I put some nasty word in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, and if someone read it, you may get the reaction. If not, you can write it control with control C. <laughs> It may work, it may work. It saves time sometimes. <laughs> uh, uh, Drury. No, Wittgenstein to Drury. Let your patients know that they, are always, uh, that, that they ha always have time enough to talk to you. Which is sort of what, what is psychotherapy based on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's about the balance of psychotherapy and psychiatry. Most likely it's nothing new. Nothing new. What, what was really new when I googled for the first time the New Zealand, uh, the New Zealand document called Our Lives in 2014. I don't know if you, if, if you know it. I love it. Madly love it. Uh, New Zealand spent some money to, to, to help service users to set the basic principles of uh, how they want to be treated in mental health systems. And the, the, what they produce is brilliant text of very strange and partly crazy style. Using the Maor, old Maori word, because they don't want to use word mental illness. They want to use tangata motu hake, just cheerish about absolute, cheerish your absolute uniqueness. And someone, something like cherish, yep, yep, yep. Something very special, the caring community. Yeah, but community-based everything. Yeah? And, and all that is written in that special language. And they say brilliant things. I want to stay at home. Because my one, wow, one hour are there, is there. Yeah? And don't deal with us as with people with mental illness. Deal with us like that. And it's so simple. And it's a very strange piece of literature. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's strategy, it's state strategy. Do you know the language of state strategies? The action plan? 
for mental health 2020 to 30, it's slightly different literature. So that's what's really brilliant. And I really sort of love New Zealand way where they are heading to because they are really value focused. They are not GDP focused. And all the community. So, so for me, it's something really visionary and something we can learn from. Can I just say? Yeah, yes, yes, please. So I know this work very, very well, but it's not the original work. The original work was much earlier. The problem with this is, is that it wasn't owned by the professionals. It was owned by the community. And this is what's happened, this is what we witnessed from this conference, is the word recovery is being owned by professionals. And it seems to be the same issue that the Maoris have. The Maori are actually suffering desperately because of physical health, yeah. over medication, the prison system, and all the other issues that we see in mental health. So they have the values, but who has these values? And this is, I think this is wonderful work, and yeah. I have to pin all the work we, we did on this work, yeah. but these are not my values. Yeah. And I think that's so important yes. when we talk about recovery, we talk about whose values, whose yeah. beliefs are they? Wonderful work. Yeah. Not applied. Yes. Yes. Well. Yes. That actually, I, that now I really, I'm not able to to, to, to say the name. The short video I watched a few years ago. It's a new peer worker from New Zealand who really uh, talked about. She talked about it in a way of political ideology. Yeah. It started with us. Yeah. Now it's up to you, providers, yeah. and but we have to make one step further to all society. Which is political program. Yeah. It's political program. And in Lisbon we have partners and they are in like... The feeling at their meetings are like... Well, I was educated in the communist regime, so like Karl Marx coming to the, to the factory. Like, <laughs> vibrating atmosphere. We are changing. Yeah? That, and that's what I really experienced there. Yeah, it's, it was there. And so, yeah, I, I fully agree. Whose, whose values are there? But I, I'm helped by that lady from New Zealand. That's it. We start there. There is, yes. Yeah, then if we, if, we, if we take it and, and use it or work with it as a political program, uh, then there is a question to whose uh, aims we, we use it. Yes. And as professionals, we often do it for our aims, and not, not the users. Yes. yes. Which is another. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We, we, we will not have too many voters having this political <laughs> program, of course. <coughs> but the truth, or, you know, and the, my life story, well, I'll show you later. Or maybe it's maybe all in the later topic, but anyway. Uh, so, so that's our lives. Yes, and my last part is something which is really not terminologically correct. But I call it like, Something behind it, even more general, more philosophical. Something connected with meaning, more than with grammatical rules. You know? And we, so my private word, or our company's word maybe, is, is uh, semantics. <coughs> uh, and we don't really know what it could be, and it's most likely not, it's most likely not what's uh, at the faculty philosophical faculties or uh, language something faculties, semantics means. Uh, but what I mean by that, I mean by the <coughs> things like strength-based attitude, not, ju not judgmental thinking, uh, solution-oriented attitude, those things that are not really grammatical, but they are sort of principle, principles of your thinking. And they are, and, and it's not like, I like to think like that, but they are, they are rules that can be practiced, or they are, they are attitudes that could be practiced and developed like that. I, I'm like that because strength-based was 10, 15 years for me, something like, ah, terrible, too sweet, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to see things as clear as possible. Yeah, but then something happened, and now I'm quite, maybe too much, <laughs> strength-based. Yeah? Uh, Non-judgmental thinking. Again, well, you can read Buddhist scriptures, 
and it's there. <laughs> and now you read it in, in American methodology of how to work in community-based mental health care. Well, nothing new, but it's very much work on me. <laughs> and yeah, and is the state allowed to say we only employ someone who does who is able to think in a non-judgmental way? And how and can you imagine in Czech schools, maybe in other in Czech schools, how we teach that and how we do the exams on it? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. It's not easy. Like checking exams. That's all. No. The, the, the Buddhists or others, they knew you have to have master. You have master, master, to, you know, now it's quite all right. Work a bit on that. And That's it. That's how education in the traditional way works. We still have it in crafts. When you handcraft, you have to have master. It shows you how to work with hammer. Myth or something. Yeah. So I wrote just this today, or mm. in the broadcast, it was told that uh, 400 thousands of uh, craftsmen are missing in Czech Republic. You know? So there are no masters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and and again, you may meet people that got the trainings on social oriented attitude, and some of them. Well, like, <clears throat> well, I can't believe it to you. It's artificial word, what you say. It's, it doesn't work to me. And some of them are just social oriented and say, but so, so easy to cooperate with him. How is it possible? The sound master today. And the headphones master, brilliant, phoned me two days before yesterday. And I, I, I had an idea. Can we do it? Yes. Don't, don't, don't deal with it. I'll organize it for my own. Ah. Brilliant. So some people are like that. So yeah. So I mean those principles. And can we? And it, that's the uh, that's the alchemist fallacy from my key speech. That are they? Can we can we get the list of those? <laughs> can we get the list of, of of those semantic principles to be recovery oriented enough? That's that's alchemist fallacy. But most likely it doesn't work. Recovery is great because uh, in recovery we don't really care which definition you use. Billy yesterday used totally different definition of recovery than we are used to use in our country. But that's all right. That's a very nice definition. I'm going to use it as another definition. Yeah. So, so uh, and when I was 20 years uh, younger, a uh, young Catholic Christian and I said, a mathematician, said, can you give me a list of dogmas, Catholic dogmas? I want to be sure that I'm, I'm not heretic. <laughs> there is not, well, maybe in the 30s, one crazy Dominican tried to list, make that list of dogmas, but there is not such a list in Catholic Church. And the first time I studied the textbook on dogmatics, I realized I am heretic, according to the author. <laughs> Rushed to the priest and said, hey, uh, Sebastian, his name was Sebastian, Sebastian, most likely I'm a heretic. I said, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. well, I, it's written in that book. And who wrote that? Ah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. So, uh, most likely there is not a complete list of those principles. But we do use those principles in our everyday life. Helping by, when we try to help people. And it's very big difference if you use it and if you don't use that. And Actually, to be uh, once, once in my life, I was in big trouble because uh, I had a colleague and I, I was a director, so I had the power to say, yes, we will work together or we quit. And the only reason why we decided to quit the corporation was that he thought that when we talk about strength based, about positive things, or when we talk in strength-based attitude, we, on purpose, are sort of are silent about the bad things of the person. I said, no, it's not. My picture is just positive. And I know there could be problems. 
but also problems could be called in the strength-based attitude. I said, no, you just, you just focus, that's pink glasses. You just focus on the, on the positive and you, you miss the negative. I said, no, but that's not the reason of the manager to quit the, 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 the deal with, with the worker. You can't really, yet you, you, you have to negotiate it. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So, so that's sort of funny thing that may 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 appear in the world. But we are at that level, somewhere underneath, because the legislation doesn't talk about this. But when you go to the office, you in the first minute you recognize which officer is strength based and which is not, which officer is social oriented and which is not, who is not. In the first minute, when you enter the ambulance, you see the doctor. First very, very fast. And, and if it's possible to teach it, we want to teach it. If not, all right. Yeah? Well, you have to survive. We make our own isolated group of people that love each other, and that's all right. Then. And we can't convert the mental health system. Uh, yeah, so, so some of the principles we, we have in our company at Leto Vets. Do, you don't need to understand everything to be able to help. Well, my version is, you don't need to understand anything to be able to help. <laughs> yeah? uh, don't, talk, uh, don't talk about how things are, just make clear what you could do. Yeah? Not about if our president is good or bad. It's not, not, not really a topic for a discussion. The, the topic of the discussion is, what shall we do about it? Shall I go to the, this demonstration or not? Yeah? And, it is, and in these times, it's easy, but the Second World War. Yeah? Shall we kill Hitler or not? Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's not if he's good or bad. It's what shall we do? Instead of why this cannot work, talk about what might work. That's the sentence I very often shout loudly at the meetings on transformation of Czech psychiatry. Because most of the officers, most of the mental health directors, not Martin, are just problem-oriented and, and searching for excuses why it was not possible to change it and why it's not possible to change it and why it will not be possible to change it. That's not the way we are in. We are in transformation. Who can do at least anything? Can you do something? Can I do something? I would love to contribute. That's it, that's it. And it's easy, it's, it, I don't know what is it. For me it's semantic principle. Uh, now, uh, on, on, on Facebook you may, you may find those, those nice cartoons that try to express it. Instead of sorry, say thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, maybe that's, this is the, the structured one. Yeah? Stop apologizing, start, start thinking. Yeah. Easy, simple, funny, I, I don't know how is it called, the, the picture that is spread all over the social media, yeah, Ma meme or something, my son calls it like that. Uh, so yeah, and it's simple, easy, and you can, you, can, you can learn it, you can learn it. And if you start to do it, and that was when I was in systemic training, and, then, and they say, well, first try to start the, the, the conversation like, how can I help you? I will never say, how can I help you, that what shop assistants say in the United Kingdom. <laughs> yeah? uh, Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, but and they said, well, you are in the training, do try and just watch what's, gonna, what's happening. Yeah? <laughs> and then I started to see, realize it really worked somehow. Now I have different questions, of course. But in those times, it really worked, it was brilliant. If you like that, if you Google it, it's everywhere. <laughs> I pinched it from the internet. Uh, yeah, I, well, so I'm over with my presentation. You saw that, that picture in the, uh, in the butthole previous. Another one, another one is People start to will the moment they feel hurt. <laughs> yeah, um, so, yes, so this is the end of my presentation. I'm starting discussion. We still have half an hour, which is nice, so we can, we can solve it all. Um,
Thank you. Um,